So we're going to talk about bond energy. The first one I want to remind you what happens with two atoms and how you break a single bond. So the blue and the red atoms here, simulation, use this potential energy function, the Leonard Jones potential energy function, with a well depth, so the depth of this well here of minus or of three times ten to the minus twenty-one. So the bottom of this is minus three times ten to the minus twenty-one. To break this bond, I would have to add back that amount of energy, 3 times 10 to the minus 21. So that's what I'm going to do in this simulation. You can see the simulation right now has potential energy of minus 3 times 10 to the minus 21, which just tells you that those two atoms are exactly this distance apart. That's about 1.12 sigma apart. They're right at their bond length. The kinetic energy is very tiny tells you the temperature is very low or also that the thermal energy is very small. So the total energy, this minus 3 times 10 minus 21, this number right here, is potential energy. It's also bond energy because there's no thermal energy. It's all bond energy. If I want to break that bond, I have to add back the 3 times 10 minus 21. I'm going to do it in three steps. That amount I'm going to add back in three steps. I'm going to add 1 times 10 to minus 1, 21 to get me to minus 2. I'm going to add one more to get me to minus 1. And then I'm going to add one more to get me to 0. And later on, I'll add one more to get me to 1 times 10 to the minus 21. You can see that there's 500 frames that I'm going to run here. Every 100, I'm going to add in 1 times 10 to the minus 21. So you'll see that the kinetic energy will go up and they will be vibrating farther apart. So let me start this. Pretty soon it'll get to 100 and I'll add in 1 times 10 to minus 21, so now it's minus 2. Then I'll add in another one, so now it's minus 1 times 10 to minus 21. And now another 1 times 10 to minus 21 to get it to 0, and you see that they're broken apart and that they started moving faster because I added one more 1 times 10 to the minus 21 so they were still broken apart but finally in the end the total energy was way up here so we started out with a total energy here we added a little bit to get it to here they bounced around that was thermal energy we added a little bit more to get them to there they bounced around farther but when we got it to zero they flew apart no longer bound we're going to use that idea. The idea is the well depth tells us how much energy we have to add to break a bond. We're going to use that to think about bond energy for more atoms. First we'll go back to two. These are all going to be red atoms now and it turns out I've set up the red atoms to have a Leonard Jones well depth of 1 times 10 to the minus 21 and you can see that the potential energy is essentially 1 times 10 to the minus 21 right here. So again, a very low temperature. There's two atoms. Any two atoms have one bond. And so each of those atoms has half of that bond, you could say. It's 0.5 bonds per atom right here. I'm going to start this just so you can see it move around. I move the box around a little bit. So you can see that at very low temperature, they're not quite touching each other. And by touching, I just mean the red circle that I've drawn there has a diameter of one. And the distance between them is the distance of this at this minimum, so it's 1.12. So they're about 10% farther apart than the particular circles that I've drawn. All right, two atoms one bond, 0.5 bonds per atom. The total potential energy is negative 1 times 10 to the minus 21. What about three atoms? Well, if you can count this, you'll find that for three atoms, there's three neighbors, three neighboring bonds. And so three times this 1 times 10 to the minus 21 is about negative 3 times 10 to the minus 21. Three atoms, three bonds. So with more atoms, instead of two atoms, we had a half a bond per atom. Now we have three atoms, one bond per atom. 
about four atoms. Well, you can count them up. It turns out there's six bonds, six neighbors, individual distinct neighbors. Potential energy, look it up. It's minus six. Six bonds, six of those. I can start this up so you can watch them bounce around a little bit. Four atoms, six bonds is 1.5 bonds per atom. So as we put more atoms together, there's more ways of those atoms connecting up, and we end up with more bonds per atom. I'm going to go through the rest of it kind of quickly. Ten atoms. If you wanted to, you could stop this simulation and count those up. There's 26 neighboring atoms, and so 26 bonds. But you could also just look up the potential energy here, minus 26. So 26 of those gives me a bond energy of negative 26. It's 2.6 bonds per atom. What about 50? About 4.7 bonds per atom. I'm going up a little faster here, but the number of bonds per atom has gone up to 4.7. It's not going to go up a lot higher than this. How do I know there's 234 bonds? I can't count this, of course, so I just look and it says, oh, 234 times 10 to the minus 21. That's 234 of those well depths. Just quickly show you 100, about 520 bonds. Whoa, comes at you a little bit. Anyway, 5.2 bonds per atom. plot it all. Number of bonds per atom. Remember it was a half for two atoms. This is versus the number of atoms. Half a bond per atom for two atoms. One bond per atom for three atoms. 1.5 bonds per atom for four atoms. Can't remember exactly. I think that's five, six. There's a bunch of them here all the way up to 25, 50, I showed you 50, I showed you 100. By the time you get up to 200, it's getting close to six bonds per atom, but it's also leveling off. Even at very high numbers of atoms, you're not going to have more than about six bonds per atom. Why is that? Well, if all of the n atoms have 12 nearest neighbors, and each atom shares, it shares the bond with each neighbor, Half a bond for each atom times 12 neighbors, 12 over 2 times n is 6n bonds. So for large values of n, that's what we expect whenever there happen to be 12 nearest neighbors. The number of nearest neighbors is just controlled by the crystal structure that the solid forms.